It's a little quiz time for you this morning. All right, we talk about big snakes a lot, right? And how many big snakes do we actually have? I'm not talking about quantity, but species of big snakes. We have Ivy, the gigantic anaconda. She represents one of the giant snakes, right? And what other species represent giant snakes? And of course, we have Burmese pythons, right? One of them, of course, being Jeffrey, who's in shed right now, but looks absolutely, oh, don't be mad at me, Jeffrey. Of course, when they're in shed, they get a little bit cantankerous because they can't see really well. Well, but of course, Jeffrey one day could get 18 foot, right? We know anacondas are the heaviest body snake on the planet, getting as much as up to 300 pounds. Well, these guys certainly won't get 300 pounds, but they can certainly get 18 foot and up to 200 pounds. But again, that's two of the big giant snakes that we have. Like my girl Lucy here. Hey Lucy, you in a good mood today or are you in a bad mood? What do you got going on today? She's looking like she's in an okay mood, but of course, reticulated pythons represent some of the giant snakes. So we have anacondas, we have Burmese pythons, we have reticulated pythons, and now we even actually have rock pythons. Yeah, I mean, you look at this little monkey right here, and you don't think it's going to be a giant snake, but trust me, one day, this can be an 18-foot plus giant snake. It's the largest python on the continent of Africa. That's right. These guys get absolutely amazing, and I love them to death. I mean, this one's absolutely a beauty. And of course, we have its boyfriend, the patternless rock python, too, that I absolutely love to death. Again, one day, these guys are going to be at the reptile and they're gonna be absolute giants. But with that being said, everyone kept saying we were missing one. And that species happens to be in these boxes right here. So what do you say we go ahead and open up and see what we got. So let's just go ahead and check out what is going on here. I am pretty excited about this. Our buddy Matt, which is actually a mod on our podcast, which ironically enough is going to be here in the next couple days and on the podcast. So if you haven't checked out the podcast, link in the description, checking in, you can definitely check our podcast out. I appreciate it. Well, he said, hey, I've got a couple animals that would actually be, oh my gosh, they are beautiful. Whoa, sorry you're coming out. Okay. Now these guys sometimes can be a little bit crazy. I don't know what the actual temperament on these guys are, but these guys are known as being kind of face biters. But yes, another species of snake that is considered one of the giants. And that, of course, is the scrub pythons. Now, the actual largest ones are in Australia, which is called King Hornum. But these guys are actually from the Jayapura region, and more specifically, the Bird's Head Peninsula. But these, again, are scrub pythons, and they can get large. So we've already had all of the giant snakes, right? With the anacondas, the reticulated pythons, the rock pythons, the Burmese pythons. And like I had mentioned, a lot of people are like, you need to get scrubbies if you want to round out the giant snakes. And you know, the truth is, is that these will get a little bit larger than say a carpet python. So a carpet python gets pretty big, but like I had mentioned, the Australian scrubbies can get 15 foot and they are a pretty giant snake. Now, typically the Indo ones don't get quite as large, but they certainly can still get nine to 12 foot in length. So this could potentially be a pretty large animal and he actually sent us two females this happens to be one of them here and this particular one is named sublime so we're definitely excited that we have two females we're definitely going to be on the search for a male to potentially try to breed these guys one day what do you say we open up the next one so sublime was an absolute beauty and there are some variability and polymorphism within this so i have no idea what this one's going to look like Let's take a look right here. Ooh, this is pretty too. Looks like it's a little bit smaller, so it's not quite the same size, but not, well, similar. Just a little bit smaller, but pretty much the same type of look. Again, same locality and everything like that. And again, sometimes they'll call these guys bar neck pythons, and you can see why they have that bar right on their neck. So they can be called scrub pythons, bar neck pythons, amethystine pythons. Nevertheless, beautiful snakes. Absolutely so happy that Mac donated them to the Reptile Zoo. Definitely gonna be a great addition. And like I said, sometimes these guys can be a little bit cantankerous. These particular ones seem to be super, super docile, which is a big plus. Now, you gotta remember, they have been cooled down and they've been traveling. So once they heat up, who knows what's gonna happen. It did pee on me a little bit. That's part of the deal, right? So we're gonna go ahead and get an enclosure already and set up for these guys. We already have something picked out and I think they're gonna absolutely love it because these guys love to climb and they are absolutely great display animals. Not sure if they're going to be able to be pulled out yet for the public or not. We'll have to give that some time to make sure. But in the meantime, I am so happy that we now have all of the giant snake species. So this is the enclosure that we're going to actually retrofit. It's already pretty close and a lot of foliage, some stuff for them to 
climb a ledge over there that they're going to absolutely love. But we're probably going to want to add some uh, more branches, right? Because they love to be in trees. So we're going to add some vines, some branches, stuff like that. Get it all ready. Of course, uh, Jessica is the master of this one. I think Bruce is going to help. So I'll let them do their magic. And then uh, we'll go ahead and release those animals into their new enclosure. And welcome to the vlog, Reptile Army. I hope the start of your day is absolutely amazing. Do me a favor. Go over to ReptileArmy.com. We've got new stuff that's about to drop anytime. We've got a Halloween drop that's coming up that's going to be amazing. But for now, you know, you can go ahead and get whatever one you want. Got all kinds of design, backpacks, socks, you name it. Hey, it's getting cool, so we got long sleeve shirts and hoodies coming too. Go to ReptileArmy.com. And this is the part that I love the most. The enclosure looks great. Bruce and Jessica did a great job. I think these guys are gonna really be happy in here. And this is the big one. This is actually sublime here. So we'll just go ahead, get it out. Here you go, bud. And we'll just let it go ahead and adventure into its new enclosure. Again, you guys know I love releasing animals into new enclosures. I think they're just gonna really love it. Again, they've got the basking spot way up there. They can hang out if they wanna get warm. That's about 92 to 95 degrees. And then they have the cool spots over here. They've got places they can hide in the trees. They're gonna be amazing display animals. So that's one in. Let's go ahead and put Dublin in. And again, I cannot get over how absolutely gorgeous these animals are. Come on, bud, over here. And there they are, the two beautiful scrubbies in here. Absolutely amazing. Again, just gonna kind of sit back like we always do and spend a little time just watching them, making sure that they settle in good. I'm really curious, you know, just like I am with every animal we put in any enclosure, like where they're gonna like, you know, where's gonna be their favorite spot because they always seem to pick favorite spots. So uh, it's gonna be really cool to see how these guys kind of cohabitate together. You guys know that typically we keep one snake per enclosure. This time we're gonna try to cohabitate them, but we'll keep a close eye on them. They should be completely fine with the two females. And eventually, hopefully we can get a male and maybe breed these guys that would be absolutely amazing but ooh, man I tell you these are beautiful so thank you Mac for sending them to us we're gonna take great care of them and again he's gonna be here in just a couple days you are this supposed to be for Bella sure to eat one today down here with Jessica, and you guys know that my tales of breeding boas have not been very good. Well, guess who's taken over boa breeding this year? Jessica! Hopefully we have some success this year. And, and <laughs> we'll you, see. Yeah, and you, I think that she's gonna have better success. Here we are in the beginning of September. She's already gonna pair, which is smart because I usually don't pair until like December, and then it's just too late. Interestingly enough, what do we have here? He's a pastel jungle motley Passat call albino. Okay, and we're gonna breed them too? A hypo female, uh, that's 100% how pet call albino. So we could potentially produce, you know, yeah, like sun glow, motley, call albino. We'll for sure have some motleys and maybe some jungles right. and yeah. Yeah, that's right, the jungles, exactly. A whole bunch of different yeah. stuff like that. And believe it or not, you might look at a male this size and say, that's just too small to breed. Believe it or not, smaller males this size actually breed better than the bigger males, so. Yeah, because uh, we have this guy here is our other option. He's a call female, but, or a call male, but yeah. he's a lot bigger and yeah. I'm not sure that he'll actually breed her. Yeah, you know, so. seriously, when I went to Jeff Ronnie's, who's one of the best boa breeders out there, all of his males were about this size. I could not believe it. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look and see which female we're going with. She's kind of feisty, to be honest with you. She's, she's a little feisty girl. She's actually bit me before, yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> but be careful. So again, <laughs> she good. is a hypo, so she's a little bit smaller because it's from a smaller line. So we're gonna put them together and just see what happens. 
I mean, nothing's gonna happen right now, but I'm excited about the fact that we actually have male boas in with female boas in September, which has never happened before. And uh, this year, I can blame Jessica if we don't freeze babies. <laughs> No. Well, I hope not. I hope we actually get some babies. I think we will. <laughs> Jessica's way better than I am at this stuff. All right, keep me posted. Awesome. Talk, Mr. Bella. What are you doing? No, come back here. You owe me 69 cents. Come back here. This, of course, is Chicken Nugget, the frilled dragon that is absolutely wonderful and so tame. Now, everyone always wants to see them frill, right? And the truth is, is that they only frill when they feel kind of in a defensive posture, right? And they really aren't afraid of much, but I will tell you this, and I don't want to stress them out too much, but it's pretty cool to see when they get around monitor lizards like this, they typically will frill up. If he sees it, see it, oh, look at that. Look at how cool that is on a threat display. That is absolutely wonderful. Whoo! And every time I put him back by waffles, of course, he'll frill up. And he does the same with Elvis. The truth is, is that in the wild, monitor lizards may actually eat these guys. So this is definitely a threat. So I don't want to stress him out anymore. But I want to show you how cool it is when you see that threat display. That is absolutely amazing. I'm so sorry, buddy. I promise I'll never let anything happen to you. But aren't they absolutely wonderful? So our friends over at the gas station, Bill and Sally, you know, we see them every day. We buy our little conveniences from them. So I figured that we're going to surprise them with our armadillo Brillo. He's taking a little nap. Oh, come on, Brillo. We're going on a little adventure. Look, he ran right out. He's just like, yes, finally. Let's go. Wrong way. Over here. Wrong way, buddy. Oh, man. They're not the brightest. <laughs> Time to go play. Time to go play. Brush his little butt off so we don't get the gas station dirty. We're going to go surprise some friends. Hey, Bill. I got an armadillo for you, man. <laughs> yeah, you could pet him. Look at him. He's oh so my cute. God. No, I'm not afraid. No, he's just a little armadillo. So he's so cute. We just got him. <laughs> hey, buddy. Kid, he loves to get little cuddles oh and stuff. Oh, my goodness. He's the he's friend. So adorable. He's like a duck. <laughs> Look, he's like a little baby. He's a little baby. My husband's infatuated with those. Really? I was showing him something on Pinterest the other day. Yeah. Would you mind if I took a picture of him oh, so yeah. I could show my Do husband? it. Oh. oh. Look at that. That is just amazing. You like scratch your brain? <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> See you guys. Oh, we got some more people. You want to say hi to Norma Dillo, bud? Oh, that's so cool. Hi. You want to touch him? No. Oh, cool. Thank awesome. you. Yeah, no worries. Have a good one. <laughs> there we go. Spreading the word. Armadillos. Hashtag. I don't know. We were not taking them into the gas station and showing all of the customers. <laughs> this is so much fun. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, can you do me a favor? Right over here, there's a playlist. You could watch one of those too. I appreciate you guys. You know what else I'd appreciate? Right over here, you can hit that subscription button. It really does mean a lot to me. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.